Before I do one thing, I have to say, take it, I need you a chance to meet. So I always, when I speak, I want to make sure that I at least touch or feel everyone that's in the room. Uh, and that way I know at that point, I took time out to meet with everybody. So I'm going to head over this way for a minute. How you doing, Tony Sands? How you doing, Tony Sands? Now I can say I've touched or heard everybody's name in the room. Guys, when I when I look, ladies, when I look among this room, and I see the faces, I see the ambitions, I see people that want to elevate their position, wherever they at, they be GMs, defensive coordinators, office coordinators, whatever. You want to move up to the next level. And the guys and the people that went before you wanted to move up to the next level. But in that process, are we truly moving up to the top level to elevate? When I look at certain names, and I got a chance uh, this week uh, to spend some time with Coach Hugh Jackson. I already knew Coach Sapp, from Orange Sapp, and I call him Coach because that's what he does. <laughs> you know, he does his thing. He loves young men. And Coach Jackson, I got a chance to meet him and understand him. I, seen him so many times on television. But when I look at pioneers in our business, when I look at people like Rich Pauly, Bobby Marshall, Art Shell, Tony Dunn, when you guys hear those names, what is one thing that you can take from those names that you will say, listen, I want to put that in my bag? If I say that name, if I actually, and I Call them those names. What's the first thing that you would say about those young men? Work. Work. Uh, anybody have a go ahead? They're consistent. Consistent. Um, perseverance. Perseverance. Legacy. Legacy. One thing, and I heard a lot of great things, and those were the one thing that I did not hear us use as a narrative. As we hear another, other people get it. Geniuses. Wow. That's that's that change of the guard. We've been boxing ourselves in that we'll say those things, and those are great accolades to have. But we never get over that threshold to say that these guys are geniuses at what they do. They've galvanized the generation. They put you guys in the position that you are. But now, if I would have called out some other names, if I would have called off Coach Belichick, names like that, first that Bill Walsh, would have said, those are geniuses. What's the difference between the two? Nothing. They were both winners. But we've allowed society to not let us attach those type of adjectives to those young men's names. And that's where we go wrong. Because if we're going to change this, and, and when I read that sign, nothing changes if nothing changes. You men and ladies in this room will be the ones that change that. And you're going to change it. And when I, I, I look at numbers in this business, and I, I always believe because, you know, they're going to the analytics, and that's a big thing when you guys feel. I'm going to give off some numbers to you. And I want you to when I call off these numbers, I'm going to see if you can match these numbers to what I'm saying. 102.5, 20, 26, 16, 2.2. Remember those numbers. Because at the end of the speech, I'm going to come back and I'm going to give them to you. But I want you to ponder over right now and see exactly what is he saying. Where is he going with that? When you as a person wake up every morning and Coach talked about it because I talked about it uh, on our last speech. How many people in this room woke up and said to themselves, I just don't want to be a head coach in this league. I don't want to be a general manager in this league. I want to be an owner of a team in this league. And some of you say, ah, it don't happen for it. don't happen. It's, until we say it can happen, it will happen. And it has happened. I was just in the building speaking at the Raiders game. And it happened. Hmm. It happened. Davis was not an owner when he jumped in the business. He was a coach in the business first. But he was a younger coach at that time and was ambitious about not just, as they say, being 
satisfied with being a coach. She wanted to be an owner. I want to control the narrative. And we got to wake up every morning saying, I want to control the narrative. Now, how do I do it? Do I do it at my level? Or when I wake up in the morning and I look at myself in the mirror, do I just have a title next to my name? DC, OC, BP. Those are not a lot of great titles. But do people see me as a mentor? Do they see me as a physical educator? Do they see me as a teacher, a coach, a father figure? Do they see those type of titles next to my name? Because if they just see the one title, then you're going to stay where you're at. You're going to stay where you're at. You see how Coach Sapp, Warren Sapp, talk, Hall of Famer talks about Tony Dungeon. You see how Chad speaks about Coach Jackson. It wasn't just the title of those men that lasted with them. Yeah, they were coaches, but they talk about them as father figures. How many people in this room, men and women in this room, have children? Raise your hand. How many of you have young men, young boys, children, grandchildren? How many have boys? How many of you guys want them to look up to you? And when they see you, they see you, well, that's my coach, that's my dad, sometimes they want to follow in that direction, correct? They want to follow. They want to be coaches, GMs. Hey, I want to be that because that's what I see. You are their first teacher. But the one thing that we don't want, we don't want your children, your boys, as you say, you love them to death, you want to put them in the best position, correct? You don't want them sitting in this, in this room or a room like this saying the same thing. Nothing changes if nothing changes. They're depending on you as men and women in this room to change that narrative. We have women in this room. Hard field to break into, am I right or wrong? Hard field to break into. So you're dealing with it twice as hard. You're dealing with it twice as hard as a woman to break into a dominant man field. We as black coaches, we're dealing with the narrative. It's a hard field to break into. It is hard because we've made it hard. We get to the top and we think about us. We don't think about how we can lift up those behind us. Because it's like a tree. If I lift up one, you lift up one. If even and every one of us in here lifted up two people and brought them up, those two go back and lift up two more. Man, this change gets, this change moves fast. Make sure, make sure that you move that. And I want to take it back to those numbers that I gave you. We said 102.5. That's the amount of years that the NFL has been in existence. Wow. 102.5 years. There's only been 26 black coaches. And I'm not sure. I, I got to look at it to see how many. But well, we know we haven't had any women. So we got to move that narrative. 16. When I gave you the word 16. I'm going to see if anybody can guess what I was saying about that 16. Anybody got an idea of what that 16 means? There's only one black coach that's been in existence and had their tenure for 16 years. And that's Mike Tom. But the, how long we hold these positions as head coaches is only about 2.2 .2 that we get to turn a program around. But the league has been in existence for 102 years. And that was after September the 22. We got to change that narrative. We got to move the needle. We can't continue to say nothing changes if nothing changes. We got to make change, guys. Ladies, what are you going to do this day to make sure that your kids, your boys, or girls sitting in this room will not have to hear, hear the same thing? Turn the key, change the narrative. Make sure each and every day that you step out on that field that you're changing the narrative. You're just not coaching. Reach down, pull one up. Let's make this thing successful. Thank you. Thank you.